Hi everybody, it's Lace, and uh, this is going to be a highlight reel for R35. Some of the things that I'm most excited about is going to be the new plants. Now, while some people are wanting to plant things for um, agriculture to use in cooking recipes, I'm looking at them from a deco perspective. So I kind of planted one or two or more of everything of what I wanted to see. Right here we've got um, some banana trees, and uh, you can see you get a nice orange palette out of them. You got your uh, new tomato trees, which we already had the apple trees, but this is a little bit different kind of a red palette. We've got the pepper tree. Let's see if I can get my mouse over it. It is a pepper tree. It's not showing up. Obviously, the lettuce is uh, pretty forlorn, and so is the carrot. We won't be using those in deco. Uh, they're pretty, pretty sad looking because there's just one little plant there. Um, this is wheat. Um, I think that's that could be uh, pretty interesting, like in an adobe house or something. Um, maybe you get your little, uh, instead of the planting barrels like I like to use, there's also the terracotta. And then there's like the long row things. Um, but I think the wheat could be pretty nice in a more desert looking place perhaps. Or indoor around a kitchen or something uh, that you've built. Um, this is potato plant. Potato plant's got a nice leafy green, which is different than... Um, the regular plants that we can just buy off deco merchants so it's pretty cool uh, I believe this is the tea one let's see if I can get my mouse uh, I'm still getting that barrel I think this is tea yeah it's tea um, I guess when I think of tea I always think of brown but that's because it's dried out obviously if it wasn't dried it would be a green so again you've got a nice uh, different kind of green texture that you can use in your decorating uh, this one was and get the mouse right oh a pepper plant okay that was pepper so what was that then well that says it's a pepper plant I'm not sure why they're different look at like different colors there maybe there's different varieties of pepper plants I'm not sure why they the two look different um, this is obviously a lemon tree so you're gonna get a nice yellow palette for your decorating there corn's gonna give you some altitude in your planting and remember you can plant these outside in a greenhouse and then you can move them inside and stuff and keep them you don't have to harvest them um, and that's what I like to use the deco for so I can see I'm probably gonna be using this one because it's quite pretty um, I'll probably use a little bit of the pepper and, and all these and maybe even the tomatoes and I've already said what you can use the wheat for so that's one of the things I'm pretty excited about and uh, it was one of the first things I tried to do was get something planted so I could see what these look like and determine which ones I would want to grow a bunch of for deco um, and remember that we have a contest that's ending on the forums on November 6th, which is basically a week from today, and uh, it's showing your house. You'll do, I think the rules are you do a screenshot of the outside, and then you do up to eight of the inside and stuff, and, and then there's some other rules. But check that out on the forums, and uh, you may want to incorporate some of these plants in there. I'd get them growing now um, so that you, know, you can get your house fully decorated before that contest ends again that's November 6th one of the other new things uh, in R35 is the ability to get water from various uh, items that are in your POT or on your lot or whatever this is the wishing well from the make a difference store and to do it I'm just gonna double click it you don't have to uh, have a bucket in hand to get a bucket of water uh, we can see there's a little issue with animation there uh, probably should report that as a bug because that looks a little weird um, the other one is you can craft one and that's what it looks like and you can put this on your own personal lot or something um, but again I'm just uh, double clicking or hitting E and again looks like the animation is tiny bit off they probably need to work on that and maybe when they uh, fix them because right now on POTs only the owner or steward can gather water from them uh, and then this is the third device that I could gather from um, I had to spin this around because it was not letting her do it. And I think I think there's a problem with the size of the waist and the size of the rims on these things. They're kind of messing the animation up if you want perfection. But anyway, uh, look for that to be fixed probably pretty quickly. They know about that bug on the water gathering. It'll save you money. Um, it, they still weigh quite a lot, um, so you can't carry a ton of water. Um, and, and that kind of breaks in or segues into encumbrance, which is also something new in R35. I talked about a uh, heavy lifter and stuff like that before um, in other videos like in uh, skills videos but let's go over it again. I'm gonna hit K and I'm gonna go into my adventuring skills and I'm gonna go into tactics 
And uh, the first thing you got to do is get this to 40. Once you get your train strength to 40, it allows you to train this. And you can see I put quite a bit in this. Your min-maxers that are, you know, just going for pure combat builds, they probably put this in, but they didn't put this in. When I look at my inventory, um, look at all those deeds that didn't win. <laughs> um, we can see my encumbrance. Um, it's uh, 117 to 461. Actually, mine's more around close to 600, but I have uh, gear on that's not bumping it up. Um, but I can go and I can mine a lot from getting this up. Um, I probably will GM this because I like to go out and hunt and not come back in until I'm full, especially if I'm looking for metal scrap or, or things to just, you know, weapons to turn in and sell. sell. Uh, the less amount of time that I have to zone in and out of some place to, you know, get stuff, and it, it takes me a lot, you know, I'm more productive, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I like this to be up high. It's not the perfect combat build by putting points into that, but that is how you can do it. Um, basically now if you get overloaded, and you know, you'll see the little overburdened icon up here, um, you're going to end up walking really slow. You know, I can't really simulate it because I'm not overburdened, and it will start to eat up your focus is what I believe I've read. Um, again, I'm like close to almost 600 pounds that I can carry, which is quite a bit. Uh, I think I saw on the forum somebody's got like 2,000 or 10,000. I don't even know what it was. Um, but I find uh, probably somewhere around 300 or so as you're starting out, you know, trying to get it to 300 gives you a good hunting session, um, allows you to collect enough stuff, whether it's ore or weapons. Um, but of course, more is better for me because I just want to go out there do it, stay out there as long as I want to hunt in a particular scene or, or mine or whatever, and not have to make as many trips back. Uh, you can walk overburdened, but you're going to be really slow. Um, I don't mind making the trips as long as I can get a good cache of stuff. There is one more thing I want to cover um, as far as agriculture goes, and uh, I'm just going to grab a barrel here, a planting barrel. And if you're in a POT that has a crafting merchant or if you're, you know, in an NPC town or whatever, you can get your barrels and, and your stuff off these guys. Um, you don't have to go and find a specialized place. Uh, that was a lot of releases ago. Now it's much easier to get that barrel. Um, we've already harvested some water. So I'm just going to grab this barrel and slap it down. Let's see. Barrel. Gonna throw this down. I'm going to double click it. It's going to bring up my agriculture. I only have one seed. I don't have fertilizer. Um, just going to double click it and I'm going to plant it. Okay, so now it's planted. Kind of hard to see that little tiny apple tree, but it's there. But now when I double click it, it's going to say, would I like to water this? And I say yes. See that how the soil turned a different color? I know this plant's watered. So if I want to check on it, you know, and however many hours, this one isn't in a greenhouse, it's not going to grow very fast, I can tell visually um, by doing this, I don't have to do the double click and used to double click and go, it doesn't need to be watered and blah, blah, blah. So now I can't, don't even have the option to water it because I've got that visual indicator that it's watered. So that's going to help people that have huge amounts of crops that they're planting at different times and they have different growth rates and stuff. It's going to help them see visually without having to double click everything or E the everything key. One other new feature is uh, POT owners now can change their spawning points. Mine's perfectly placed, you know, it just happened to be, that's probably why I chose this template way on back because I liked how it spawned in. Um, and I knew that that was coming, but it was going to be a while. So mine spawns in pretty perfectly. It comes up and, and the town was actually designed around the spawn point so that the center of the town, quote unquote, where the crafting area is here, organic around it. Anyway, um, if your town wasn't that lucky, you would double click your uh, empty village lot here, click the little settings thing, and you go to manage town access. Now, the thing that you're going to take away from this is, look, you've got a great map of your POT. So if you're a brand new POT owner that really hasn't played around with it, this is showing you where all your lots are. Here is uh, my current um, spawn in point, I believe. Or no, that's where we're at. My bad. Um, my spawn in point is here. Um, that little blue marker is going to move around as I move around. There's two, three, town crier, and that's where mine's at is by the, the town crier and all this flat land, and that's how my town's growing out. Um, we've got some people living out here. We've got some living out here. Um, I think there's one over here. 
Um, but it's basically showing me all the other flat land that's available in my POT that people can live. Um, you can see there's, you know, obviously a couple little islands and all kinds of things. Right now we're just growing, like I said, organically out from this point on. Um, so that's just something to, to take away uh, from this is not only is it a tool to change your zone in point, if you're trying to say, well, where are all the places that I can uh, place a lot marker for people to live? Well, this kind of give you a visual. There's also when you got your POT, there were map of XXX type of town, which shows kind of the same thing. I think this one's a little prettier, um, but it works the same way. So if you're out trying to place lot markers, throw down a row. Uh, maybe click this and you can say uh, your little red arrow would move from here to maybe over here wherever you are and you would get a little bit of a visual representation uh, to place your lot markers just something to think about I'm not going to save this because you know we're fine where we're at but uh, that's brand new in R35 there isn't a town exit point yet um, that you can select but that would probably be coming as well in later releases also in this release, I've got a lot of talking points that I don't really need to show you visually. Uh, starting off, one, one of the new things is we got some of our rewards from um, the telethon that we had in July. It was like the second batch of rewards that came out. And uh, some of them is the Fire Dancer stuff. That happens to be the shirt that I've got on and then the arm sleeves. Um, I don't have the little red pants on and, and the little sandal type shoes on because, uh, you know, I'm trying to be like a little leather and lace here <laughs> sorry I had to do that Stevie Nicks reference with my outfit and really I, I this is actually uh, the band hat that came in the recipes the last time this is the um, I think it's the fancy ornate band hat and I dyed it black um, so there's a little de uh, fashion hint for y'all kind of looks kind of badass to me uh, I think I was at the uh, release party last Friday and they're like ooh BDSM and I just thought she just looked badass and it's kind of a little homage to uh, Lita Ford and Grace Jones, who I've seen wear hats like this on stage and stuff, and probably pretty much a bra thing and some black leather pants. Um, anyway, uh, we also got, with this release, you got a display camera that sits on the ground, and then you got a camera that's equipable, um, and that's going to allow you to take screenshots. I haven't messed around with it a lot because I'm still using the old school, just pressing F11. Uh, when you do that, it takes the screenshot, and if you... Uh, remember or no I can hit F9 and it releases all the things uh, all the UI stuff so that's a good tip too so I can't really talk too much about the camera because I haven't used it a lot but that is one of the other new things in R35 and that was if you at the telethon pledge five bucks there was just a slew of things that came in because I think it raised over a hundred thousand dollars or something like that so we got a ton of stuff um, one of the other new things in this release is skill decay. So if I die now, I'm going to lose a little bit of XP. Um, some people have tested it, and, and it's kind of confusing the way it was written. It was like said that you'd lose four hours worth. Um, Chris explained it pretty much in detail, so I would look for that developer post. I don't want to slaughter the explanation and, and tell you the wrong way, but it's not that bad as it sounds. Now, if you have 200 GMs, and I think somebody said, on tests they had 200 GMs and and it was you know I don't remember how many million but obviously if you have 200 GMs you've been playing a long time and you're probably not gonna be dying a lot so you're probably okay also currently the skill decay is only affecting your adventuring pool um, but it just means you need to probably before you start training a bunch of skills build that up if you've got some GMs going on so and then also the other thing to keep in mind is make sure you have this at maintaining if you have it at maintaining it's gonna pull from your pool if I had put this let's say um, to not unlearning but not training and I die it's gonna suck it away and I'm gonna lose a level so going through oops I don't want that on hold on uh, going through and making sure you've got your things at maintaining you're not gonna lose a level as long as you've got a pool going on um, mine's not super high because um, I'm only training a little bit here and there and stuff. Uh, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. I'm just saying if you've got that to maintaining and you've got a pool going on, you're not gonna, you know, be a, you're not gonna feel like you're as affected as much. Um, and be, in the four-hour thing, um, again, you need to read Chris's explanation on that. It's it's pretty detailed. Um, but let's say I, I die. I've been hunting for five hours, okay, um, and I die. 
So that's four hours lost. And then I die uh, three minutes later because maybe I'm out in a group and we're doing dragons or, or something like that. It's not going to um, repeatedly hit me um, to where, like, the first time, I don't know, I'm just going to make up a number. The first time I, I lose 50,000 total experience from my pool because I've got everything to maintaining. And then I die again. I'm not going to lose 50,000 the second time because I've already lost some. I'm going to lose less. I might lose one or 2,000. Um, so don't be scared to go out in groups and stuff. That was kind of my initial worry was that, well, now I don't really have incentive to go and try to do more difficult things because I'm just going to be losing experience the whole time um, and not really gaining it back because really there aren't any mobs that are going to get you four hours back in one shot. Um, so don't be, afraid, don't be afraid to go out there and try this. Um, just, you know, remember dying the first time is going to be your biggest hit. Subsequent deaths after that is nothing. So as long as you keep a little pull going, do try to do the challenging things. Do try to do the boss mobs. Do go out and group. And don't be uh, don't be an elitist going, well, I think you're going to die. I don't want you in my group because you're going to get me killed or, you know, something like that. Don't be a snot, I guess is what I'm saying. One of the other things that has come into play this time is, thank God, finally, uh, they fixed weapon durability. Archers were, um, archers were very prone to... Uh, the weapons just, you know, from their rapid fire, seems like there was an error to me. This is just off the top of my head and what I think is because they'd use rapid fire and it's firing, I don't remember how many shots, but the durability was going into each time they used it per shot on that skill. And then plus all their other stuff that they're, you know, doing multiple shootings with, it went down very fast. Me as a pole arm user, um, I'll pull, you know, a bunch of mobs and I'll have, you know, four to eight mobs on me and I'm hitting four targets every time and I saw mine going down very fast so it was almost like every hit was ticking off the durability uh, they said they reduced weapon durability by 50% the amount of you know that it was taken away um, it didn't seem to be in there right on Thursday during the patch but then after a subsequent patch I definitely see an improvement and I'm much happier I don't have to repair as often or make new weapons because I'm not really making anything that I want to use an obsidian coin on to or, or, or crown of the obsidian on to repair and keep because I'm still working on my skills and my crafting levels and stuff so I'm just basically making throwaways and when they're done I make a new one whatever in other combat related news they've also uh, changed what they call the shield spell stacking and I guess you could use various uh, shield type things like um, I can't think of off the top of my head, it was like there was like crystal and this and that and the other. So you could go, you could sit there at the beginning of, especially like let's say a PvP fight, you could go, you could buff, 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 and you'd have four shields up. And it makes you very hard to hit from another player's perspective. Now this wasn't done as a PvP thing. It was kind of a, what was gaming the system? You'd put all these shields up and nothing could touch you. Um, and you just keep rotating your shields and uh, you weren't really taking the damage that you should be taking. So now if I put, if I cast one of these shield types of spells and then I cast another one, the first one went away and only the second one's in effect, which makes sense because each one comes basically from a different school. So if I'm fighting something that's earth heavy, I'm going to want to put an earth blocking shield up. If I'm fighting something that's fire heavy, I'm going to want to put a fire kind of shield up. I, I don't know if these are all real things because I'm not super big on those. I'm not the best uh, PVE or PV. I'm definitely not a PVP person at all. But that was the idea behind it. So that's been changed in this release. Some other things to talk about. Um, the next raffle that we're having, far less deeds. Like we had like 675 of the, of the POT ones. And then the last one we had 600 is down to 150. Um, so your odds are going to be really bad on trying to grab some more uh, deeds this time. So just keep that in mind. Um, might not be worth your time to put too much money into it. Uh, we'll see. I think the first time the odds were 1 in 4 because nobody had money. Uh, the last time I think Chris posted it was like 1 in 10. And again, I'm talking about the POT only ones because the other ones are obviously way smaller uh, odds on those. Uh, you need a lot of luck to get those. Um, so anyway, just be aware of that. Uh, Guild Registrars used to only be in, I believe it was Owl's Head, and now they're all over. So if you're wanting to form a guild, remember it's 25k. Uh, you only have to do that once, but... Um, uh, some of us that, you know, have been playing before Persistence, we got very lucky in this because we paid that 25k uh, before the Persistence launch and we didn't have to pay it again, thank God. 
um, but for new folks and stuff, um, the registrar should be above uh, the banks in many of the towns. Also, um, from last uh, last release, we had some recipes that use uh, mushrooms, and then there's pecans are using um, some of the oils and stuff. Uh, those now, if you're going out and harvesting trees, pine or maple, because that's the only two currently in the game, uh, you get a chance to drop those, just like you would the city bark or, or the uh, pine resin and stuff. You will see some uh, mushrooms and pecans drop. Um, they're not specific to a tree. It's not like maple only gives mushrooms or maple only gives pecans. I've seen them intermixed. So so that's pretty good. Um, also, uh, Bowen Bloodgood, had he, he's like the perfect astronomical guy. Um, he's, you know, really studied the skies, and he gave a ton of feedback to the devs, and uh, they've tweaked the skies. Uh, one of the side effects of this, it means that there's only going to be a perfect alignment of the stars once every 22,000 years. We're starting to get a little dark. Oh, it's very cloudy. I can't really show any of the features. Um, but he has an astronomy class on uh, Friday nights. I believe it's at 7.30 New Britannia time. It could be, could be... 6.30 New Britannia time? I can't remember. Um, but if you really want to learn about the skies and all the constellations, there's some written stuff on the forums, but really just going out there and spending some time with him, he will answer any questions you have and teach you so much. Um, but I would take a little time to read a little bit of the stuff on the forums so you can ask intelligent questions on that. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, ever since I did this with him one time, um, I really noticed the sky more. I appreciate the sky more. And now it's more in tune with real celestial alignments um, and celestial events, which later will play into crafting and other things, or so they, or so they say. New in this release, you've probably hear, heard them talk about the uh, new uh, globe. It's a Elven Village Globe Home, and here you can see it. One of my residents has already installed one. Let's see if I can jump this wall. There we go. Um, so you can see this is the end of one property and this is the start of the other. So you can kind of see the separation there. But anyway, you can see he's got quite a bit of planting going on. So what this home does is it's going to elevate above the ground and give you a lot of floor space. Also, the home acts as a greenhouse. I mean, he literally just put this down a few hours ago. I don't know what he's got going on in there yet. Hopefully he doesn't mind us <laughs> barging into his home. Uh, but yeah, his growth rate is going to be higher. He's got some light going on in there and, you know, just basic plants. Okay. Um, but you can see how much floor space you have here uh, for growing things just on the ground. If you're trying to find a home that allows you to grow a lot of things uh, that isn't a large home, this is a village-sized lot. And he's got it pretty well lit and he's got a lot of stuff. I mean, just in literally two hours, he's got his plants down, buddy. Oh, there was the gate. Yeah, see, I was so rude. I was hopping over it and stuff. And because I'm a nice... POT owner, I put a little well by him because he said he was going to be growing stuff, so I made sure. That's and also if you're a POT owner, that's just a little courtesy thing. Th throw these down. It's some some granite blocks you're going to get from uh, going out there and harvesting. Uh, I've scattered a lot of wells as people move in. I'll try to put wells by them. Again, they're not quite working yet, but it's just a nice convenience. Allow them to not have to go too far to get their water to do their agriculture. Anyway, um. This can be purchased on the Elven Crown Merchant in Virtus. There's a Viking Crown Merchant in Harvest. And then we have our Obsidian, quote-unquote, Alchemist uh, in places like uh, Central Brittany on the docks. And then our Doris in the Alchemy Shop there. Um, that's They've now loaded those with a lot more. It used to just be Potion of Expedience, Potion of this, Potion of that. There's now fireworks on them. There's Elven Tents. There's, uh, there's a, a ton of stuff on there. Too much to go into into this but uh they all have a lot of stuff that comes from the add-on store um but now for crowns so if you're a huge hunter and you're looking for a way let's say you don't you're cash poor in real life uh you can go and buy crowns now so expect the the price of kodos that people are selling to start increasing because more people that maybe are cash poor will start buying those uh to buy things from this from the you know different merchants I believe this one's 50 kodos, which if you think about it from the store, that's 50 bucks. But if you go out and, you know, can find some kodos cheap, uh, you can play in-game cash and get this house. Um, at least right now, you can probably do a decent bargain. Again, I expect them to go up over time. I know it's gotten a little brighter um, because I forgot to mention something. Um, when he first placed this globe home, uh, my other resident... Um, we did test and we could fit a greenhouse 
one of the like rusted greenhouses, which is basically the same as one of the ones in the add-on store. It did fit on the side. It looked really kind of almost tacky because it was all squished in. Uh, so keep that in mind. So if one fit on that side, I'm going to bet one possibly could have fit over here. I don't know. It looks smaller. Let's see. This is the front center stone. You'd think it'd be centered. Ah, but it doesn't look centered. Look at that. It's not really centered. So you could probably only fit one. I don't know if the round one would fit. Uh, I didn't have one to loan him to test. And uh, I just crafted one real quick and said, here, let's see if it fits. And it did fit on this side. Yeah, it looks like it's smaller on this side. So I don't think it's going to fit that way. Um, but it's still, just so you know, yes, you can fit one on there. It just doesn't quite look right. I've got a couple more things to go over verbally before we get into more visuals. But I just had to stop by this uh, particular resident's house. I really, I just really think his house looks fantastic. Um, I'm not sure what model this is. Let's see. It is a rustic three-story village. Um, just the flair that he's put into every detail. Uh, he's got some of his crafting stations outside, but he's got his work tools. He's got a little bit fenced in. He's put his own water in there. Um, he was just testing out the plants like I was, too, where he's planting a little bit of everything to see what they look like. I mean, look, he's got his work tools out here. He's got some, some you know shrubs and stuff. I just think... I think this is just a fantastic looking plot. I don't know if he's entered the contest for November 6th, but the outside is just fantastic. Um, I haven't been inside. Let's sneak in. I don't know what it looks like in there. I just know from the outside, I think it's just very well decorated. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got. Wow, looks good inside. Looks like he's probably going to fill those up. Probably still working on him. He hasn't had this for very long, or maybe only a week or two. Um, wow, yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah, this guy is quite the decorator. Um, if you don't know, I, I'm going to say his name. Hopefully he won't get mad at me. Uh, his name's Steel Core. But he's he's made it quite a nice little living space here. I really like it. Um, yeah, he's got all kinds of... I mean, this is just... Wow, it'd be hard to do this in eight shots for the contest. But I don't know. It's one of my residents, so i got to brag. Because I just really think he's done a fantastic job. I don't know what's up the ladder. I haven't really been in this house model. Oh, well, it looks like he's uh, getting ready to put some people camping out up here. <laughs> um, I just think it's a fantastic house, and I just had to show it. Uh, oh, look, I gained some safe fall. Woohoo! Um, anyway, I think it's just a fantastic house, and I just kind of wanted to showcase it. My next thing to cover verbally, and the last thing, um, is uh, you may have noticed on the forums you'll see some people, instead of just saying Avatar, it might say Bug Brigade under it. And... Uh, this is, uh, these are the people that are volunteering their time to go through all the bug reports we put in, see if they're reproducible. It, it's going to take the time off the devs of having to check every bug we report, um, and obviously it's going to give them more development time uh, if somebody's kind of, you know, vetted what we've said or, you know, collated the information that five different people reported the same thing. In addition, when uh, the new QA things go up, if you spend, I believe it's at least four hours on the test server, really looking at the new build and looking for bugs, um, you'll get, you can earn five kodos a month. So if you're like looking, you know, like, you know, you don't have a lot of money and, and you're looking to maybe get that El, um, Elven Globe home, uh, spending some time on the test server uh, in a few months, you can afford that uh, just on your own by, you know, putting a little work into the game and helping to make the game better. In addition, um, as you report bugs, and, and I believe the rules are kind of like you have to be the first one to report it and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, then there's different levels of rewards. There's things like uh, an ant farm, a corpion chair. I can't remember everything, uh, but those are started. They've been built and uh, different testers that have been reporting bugs. Um, have gotten those and, and that's something unique to put in your house also uh, there will be uh, uh, titles that you can earn you know if you're diligently doing this unfortunately because it's like the first one to report it you know us working folks we may not have as much time as some other folks to do it but um, even after the stuff's released you know because sometimes we only get like a week to QA it and all um, but even in just reporting bugs and getting them in there not only is it going to help the game, um, but it's a chance for you to get a little something-something back from 
Portillarium. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, they've already done the first round of folks that volunteered for Bug, Bug Brigade. I don't know what else they're going to get other than a different, you know, form uh, title or something. I don't know what else goes into that incentive program. Uh, Barrick did post it. You could look on the forms for that and would highly suggest doing that. Speaking of the forms, the next thing I'm going to go into is for R34, I had done, you know, a little durability food chart. There was a couple recipes I didn't have the stuff for. Some other people helped me out on them. Uh, I did this for R35. The only thing I'm missing is going to be the tier five food, which is like Phoenix stuff, dragon stuff, uh, troll stuff, I think maybe is one of the recipes or something. Um, and they're going to have a little bit better effects than, you know, tier three and four. Tier three and four came into R35 and they're fantastic, at least in my eyes. So I'm going to show you that chart that I made and uh, you can, you know, refer to it on the forums. Grab the screenshots, put them on your desktop, whatever you want to do with them. Uh, feel free to use them. So we're going to go show you that now. Okay, here we are. We're in the forums, general forums, player created resources. And the particular title of this is Food Buff Durations and Benefits Charts R, Chart R34 to 5. Uh, this is the old chart that I did for R34. And I broke out like carrot dependencies and, and stuff because there was a lot of stuff that was just really hard to get. So they kind of got down arrows and stuff that was pretty easy to get kind of got started uh, for R35 I didn't go through and do the carrot thing um, because uh, now you can grow carrots um, and they haven't seen that drop off anything it doesn't mean that it's not there I haven't found it and I haven't heard anybody speak of it but anyway this is the chart that I'm talking about and I kind of got it broken down here's the one hour duration stuff the two hour duration stuff and the four hour duration stuff so anyway if you go to uh, to the forums uh, for player created resources that's where you can find this information and you can quickly look at the benefits of everything and see what it is that you might want to you know depending on where you hunt and stuff what's the best thing for you to make how long it will last and things of that nature one last verbal thing that I kind of forgot is um, of course one of the new recipes for the mounted heads you know we've got all the bears and wolves they added the crocodile and there's been a lot of folks saying, well, where can I find crocodiles? Because it probably wasn't something they looked at. Um, you could always get, you know, skins from them and stuff. But now you get the gator tail, which is used in uh, cooking. And uh, I think there's another gator part perhaps from that. But what you're looking for is the pristine head. Um, the pristine head allows you to create the trophy that you can put on your wall. Um, I believe Themo Locke said there's something around harvest. And uh, somebody else said it was a uh, Naryard something that's kind of swampy. Um, on test, I believe I was hunting around uh, a Doris, and it was one of the trails. I believe it was the East Perennial Trail. And in there, I noticed that there was not only a uh, small alligator or small crocodiles, there was caiman, and there was large crocodile. And I found uh, the gator parts to drop off all three different types of mobs in there. It's a pretty low tier one zone. I believe the one that Themo talked about was a tier four. Um, I'm sure there are other swampy areas. Um, usually the swampy areas are gonna contain not only oyster beds, but obviously now your crocodile slash caiman. Uh, so don't think that it has to say crocodile. At least when I tested it on the test server, uh, the caimans were dropping it and the small ones were too. They were dropping the body parts. Um, again, uh, somebody else I noticed on the forums as far as the obsidian stuff goes, like obsidian wolf and obsidian stag, which are things used in uh, the new cooking recipes, somebody's like, well, obsidian stag's dropping a regular stag carcass. Uh, well, that's fine because a stag carcass creates venison meat. Venison meat, venison meat is used in other recipes. And then obviously um, obsidian carcass, obsidian stag carcass or obsidian wolf carcass is going to then be used to create the obsidian uh, wolf meat or the obsidian venison meat. Um, there's also, when you do regular stags, you get a deer carcass. And the deer carcass is used in the lower tiers. So um, think of it the same way as like when you're, you know, doing a tree or something. You might get city bark. You might get pine resin or whatever. Um, it's the same thing with the carcasses. Don't think it's broken because it's not going to be a one-to-one -one drop that every time you kill an obsidian stag, you get an obsidian stag carcass. Uh, you might just get a stag carcass. Um, so uh, I just want to kind of iterate or go over that a little bit. 
going back to carcasses again, um, I've been asked a lot of times, where are the obsidian wolves? Um, I found a pretty good population of them for, you know, in my opinion, in the spectral foothills. Um, as far as obsidian stag, they're in twin foothills, and then also they're in sawtooth. Sawtooth also has the obsidian bear. Also, another place for obsidian bear is going to be um, in deep raven's wood, but you have to kill a lot of patriarch bears to make the obsidian spawn. So I'm not certain where the really best hunting spot is for those, but there's two. The last thing I'm going to cover is the new random encounters. Now, before it used to be you just running up and down the road and uh, maybe you get sucked in. You had no warning notice. You had no way to avoid them and people didn't like them. Uh, for me, I always liked the random encounters because usually um, they had a decent amount of resources that you could get very quick because typically the land inside them was very flat. When you go into some scenes, um, you usually have to go a loop or a pattern or, you know, there's a specific kind of way to navigate the zone and trying to find maybe for looking for trees because wood is overly used in the game. Humble opinion. Far too much wood is needed to make anything. Um, trying to find the trees can be a big pain in the ass. Ooh, can I say ass? Well, I did. Um, anyway, it's a big pain. I don't think that's one of George Carlin's seven words you can't say on TV or whatever. Um, anyway, I can see the skeleton moving up there, and I can go into the encounter. Um, there's a few little bugs still going on because it just was released Thursday, and I'm sure over the course of the next month or so, we will see some tweaks to it. Um, but uh, like one of the, uh, if I go up to him, he's going to chase me. See, he's chasing me. Uh, he's going to try to suck me in. And I'm going backwards. So, wow, he's really moving. Probably going to get sucked in, but I'm going to try to run him off. Oh, he got me. <laughs> um, I jumped out of that scene after getting sucked in because um, after I went around and harvested a node, and again, I hit K for my skills. I looked at my crafting because I was really just looking for nodes. I was looking to see what this bumped up to. Um, I was at 167. I hit three nodes, and uh, obviously I only got 100 apiece. That means that the same thing is going to happen on my fighting. Uh, sure, if I kill 12 things, I'll get 1,200, uh, but my time would be more effectively hunting within my current level. Um, so one of the things that I've seen on the feedback is when you see a roving mob on the screen is some indication of their level. Um, so you can hit the ones that, you know, are going to actually be productive for you versus the ones that are low level encounters. Also, if you're a low level player, being able to see, um, being able to see that something's way above your level is going to be pretty important rather than just zoning in. Let's see if this guy gets me. Oh, he's coming for me. Run, run, force. He got me. So one of the bugs is, um, you know, I jumped into the scene and I grabbed a cotton bush and two trees. Now, even though the skeleton encounter was down the road, I got sucked into basically the one I never completed. And, and I think anybody after me would get sucked into them as well. Um, it's a reported bug. It'll be fixed. Um, but again, I don't really want to mess around in this tier one skeleton zone. Now you may be saying to myself, saying to yourself, well, you just keep showing me why not to do them. Well, I'm showing you why not to do the tier ones if you're higher level, unless you're looking for wood. Wood's always good. Okay. We got a bandit encounter coming up here. Um, also I feel like, I feel like they're chasing me too hard and too fast. Um, I think I can still skirt them if I go like way off the beaten track but I feel like their aggro range is too too large it's like oh see I'm way over here he's tying his damn shoe okay so that's what it looks like but look see how far away from him I am and I'm running and in the grass and I'm all slow and boom he catches me so so let's see what level this is let's go uh, I, don't know, I gotta find something to harvest well there's just guys everywhere they're gonna be all over me I'm just wanting to find something to see what level this is just for the purposes of the demo. Okay, yeah, see, I knew somebody's going to be on me. Dude shooting at me. I just want to check this bush. What's my thing at? Uh, 467? Okay. Hopefully I ran them off. I'm very slow on the bushes. I haven't worked the skill much yet. Ah, so this is a tier five zone. Um, again, these just went in in R35. Look for them to uh, 
to get a little more polish to them. Like I said, like a visual indicator of the level of it. I don't think they should be able to chase me down as fast as they are because I'm going off the road to avoid them, yet they're burning through the burning through the forest burninator trogdor yeah um they're they're running through the forest area much quicker than i can and i think that's unfair because what's the point in having the random encounters and you being able to avoid them if you can't actually avoid them also if they're you know being able to identify their difficulty visually um again like i said i expect that to get polished over time it's brand new it's a brand new feature and uh it will you know that'll happen uh, but in the meantime, even if you're doing a tier one or whatever, and, and especially if you're any kind of carpenter or whatever, um, yeah, trees for days, buddies. I would hit them. So that kind of wraps up this video. Uh, like I said, the last thing I want to show you was the random encounters. I expect for them to be polished. Um, again, I only highlighted some things uh, reading the official patch notes. Well, you know, the official release notes, rather on the forums will uh, clue you in, check in the bug forums to see if something's already been reported before you report it, and then also um, making sure that you put your time in QA so that as many bugs can be done before release than after. Um, anyway, uh, take care everybody, happy hunting, and be safe.